Welcome to Addicted to Busy, the podcast specifically for overachieving property managers who are dying for a little more work-life balance in their lives. Each week, we dismantle all the BS that holds us back. You'll learn how to nix those tricky self-sabotaging habits so that you have the time, energy, and motivation to create what you really want in life. If you're looking to shift from overcommitted to overjoyed, this is the podcast for you. Let's do this. Now, your host, Anna Havalyana. All right. Hello, and welcome back to Addicted to Busy. I am so excited because this is my first guest on the podcast, and I couldn't have picked a better person to come and join me today. Today, we are welcoming Crystal Allen Harahill who is also a fellow coach and is in the real estate industry as well. And Crystal and I met through the Life Coach School where we were both certified. And the second that I met her and she coached me, um, I knew I had found somebody who knows how to coach and have fun and really kind of get to the heart of it. I don't know, Crystal, if you remember what you coached me on the first time that we coached. Um, It's a little bit embarrassing. I'm going to share it here, but um, (laughs) I was having a lot of thoughts about my siblings and wanting to be as cool as them. And Crystal just held the space for me like you wouldn't believe. And it just goes to show that you guys, we all have these crazy thoughts going through our mind Mm -hmm. and it's worth it to look at it. And, And a coach is a perfect place to get started doing that. So Crystal is a mom, a wife. Like I mentioned, she's also a certified life and relationship coach and is a strong marriage coach for professional women who want to have to stop having the same fight with their spouses. Through her practice, she helps women win in their relationships like they are winning professionally, no more waiting endlessly on the other person to change. She's relatable with a down-to-earth vibe that makes you feel seen safe and cared for. She believes women are change makers and that families and generations are forever changed when women engage in their own unique transformation. When she's not spending time with family and friends or helping clients, she's learning something new, enjoying the outdoors, drinking tea, or watching the Golden Girls. So (laughs) Crystal, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Anna, for that intro. It is my honor to be in the guest seat for your first guest of your Addicted to Busy podcast. I am so excited for our time today. And thank you for that reminder about our first coaching call together. It's a great (laughs) example of what you were just saying that nothing is ever too little to get coached on. Oh, 100%. The timing couldn't be more perfect. Uh, Crystal and I were just talking before we hit play. I have a cold today, so we get to let you take the reins and and tell us about what you do. So I would love to hear about you, your history in real estate, and then also how you got into coaching and how that all came together. Absolutely. So my connection to real estate actually had me starting as a virtual assistant, and I was trying to think of a way that I could connect my virtual assistant business to the real estate industry, which I always had a personal love for. I remember um, even before my husband and I met, I would just go look at model homes sometimes just to walk through and see how they're decorated, see the layout. And then when I met my husband, he actually had a same interest. And so that's, that's what we would do sometimes. So I've always had a personal love for real estate and when my virtual assistant business in 2015, I was able to connect with the realtor and serve as her transaction coordinator. And so the my business for many years was me managing transactions for high producing realtors. And so I actually have never been licensed as an, uh, a real estate agent, but I was able to work in that very niche market and not only serve realtors, but I wanted to give back basically, because the way that I decided to do that was through courses. And at that time, I don't do that anymore, but at that time I would teach other stay-at-home moms because that was my story as well. Work from home, stay-at-home moms, how to create their own real estate TC business. And so that's what my business looked like. And that was my professional 
uh, connection and introduction to uh, real estate. And so I love doing that work. It was very detail oriented. It was obviously very behind the scenes. I didn't have anything close to the schedule of a realtor. And so <laughs> it was a, a great way for me to be in the industry, but still have some great boundaries and, um, you know, a lot of control over how I worked. And so I love doing that work. I did it for six or seven years before I transitioned to uh, solely focusing on life coaching. And because my audience was real estate, you know, um, centered before, many of m- much of that carried over to now. And so my I have realtors, you know, that are in my audience right now because I definitely understand the industry, right? I understand some of the things that they're going through um, in general. So property managers, real realtors, that type of thing. And then my husband and I, we also have um, investment property. So we have our own property manager and that type of thing. So very familiar with it, both both personally and professionally. Yeah, 100%. What, what drew you into coaching? To, and what I mean that is um, like to invest in coaching for yourself for the first mm-hmm. time. Yeah, you know, I think many times, especially as you maybe hit certain, um, certain maybe age ranges where you may have a moment where you just feel like there's something more or you're feeling a little out of alignment or you feel like, you're doing everything to the best of your ability and things still just aren't looking like you would hope that they would compared to the effort that you've been putting in. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, that's where I was in 2020, which is when, and Anna mentioned this, when she introduced me at the beginning of how we met was through our um, certification program, but that 2020 was when I first was introduced to the, our, our mentor who um, founded our certification pro- program. And then it was shortly after where I decided I want to be a life coach because I need the work for myself. Right. It was like being your first client can sometimes be very powerful. Mm-hmm. And then even though I became a certified coach and had all the tools that we use to help ourselves and others, I even saw the, you know, advantage and benefit of continuing to invest in myself. So by having a coach myself, even though I am a coach and many times it's almost like, you know, you need a space where you can just come and be, where you don't have to wear all the hats. You don't have to, be a property manager in that moment. You don't have to be, you can just come as a woman or come as whoever, you know, you are in that moment and just be, and let your brain just, you know, say all the things, don't care about how it sounds and have someone help you see what you're creating, help you dig down a little bit deeper and see what else is available to you that maybe you haven't even allowed yourself to have access to before. And of course, you know, like, for example, the way that you work with property managers, of course, because you have that extensive experience as well, you can help them specifically with that. But sometimes it's just great to just come and be and be supported and helped. hundred percent. Yeah. Like this, the, the, when you coached me, I was coaching on something that I don't know that I ever would have admitted that to Mm. a family member or a friend. And and that's what I love about that relationship is, is that you get to just empty your mind of whatever is in there. That's right. That's right. And, and it's like no judgment, you know, and, and also it's, you know, what's unique about the training that we went through in our six month certification program was that we learned that the client, they, they are, they have all the wisdom, they have all the answers inside, right? So it really, in a sense, makes our job easy, because we're not coming to say that we know that you should do A or B. It's like, let, let's look at all the options. What are your thoughts around the options? What will they create? What will that decision create? What will it, you know, create challenges around maybe? And you have the wisdom always, to make the right decision for your life. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Curiosity, what drew you to focus on relationships in your practice? Yeah, you know, I appreciate that question because I will first being completely transparent, I knew that there was definitely space for me to be better in my marriage. And that that's where my initial thoughts went to, honestly. But what I also know, especially now being a little removed from going through certification is relationships are all around us. Mm-hmm. They're in your brokerage firm. They're in your, you know, with your friends, they're with your, your children, like relationships are all around us and being in a space where you can number one. And I know that you and I both preach this understanding where, where it is that you're coming from, why you're showing up or presenting in a certain way, that type of thing is so beneficial, so advantageous for you to have healthy, productive relationships, even with boundaries included, that type of thing. But it's just a win-win doing that work on yourself. It's a, a ripple effect in all of your relationships. And so I knew that if I focused on relationships that I could be better and it's something that I would use for the rest of my life. 100%. Well, I, I think that that reciprocity also goes back to your employer as well. Yes. Um, I know for myself, I'll, I'll never forget a particular argument I had with my husband. Mm-hmm. I think this was before I started coaching, but it, it didn't go well. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> I walked out the front door and started Googling books on how to control emotions. Mm. And it was just that pivotal moment where I realized I am so stressed out at work that it's affecting my relationship. Yes. And what was interesting was as I started to uncouple the stress at work, Mm -hmm. I noticed it was easier to show up in my relationships. Yeah. And then I also started to see Sometimes when I was festering on a relationship, it was affecting how efficient I was at work. It's just too yes. much street. So yeah, 100%. Yeah. I love you sharing that story. And actually it reminds me, uh, maybe it was even like last year, one of our conversations you had shared with me, maybe around that time that you would put a post-it on your door. So that way, before you left, you're like, check yourself, check yourself before you wreck before you yourself. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I had to remember like this day yeah. is done. Right. No matter what has happened in this office, this day is done. Like from the second that I walk out, like I'm going to give to the best of my ability. I'm going to give my, my family and friends the best and leave this here. Yes. Yes. And that, that took intentionality, you know what I mean? And realizing that, you know what, I am possibly being, you know, I'm burning the candle at both ends here and something has to give. And I think that you know, the real estate industry does somewhat have a reputation for that because many aspects of that from like the realtor standpoint is kind of go, 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 but especially property managers, because Mm -hmm. yeah, if it's 2 a.m. and the water heater is, you know, emptying out into the garage, like who is the tenant going to call Mm -hmm. (laughs) the property manager, you know, like, all the the different things that go into um, the role of being a property manager, specifically in the in, in the real estate industry, I think it's a very um, unique pos- unique position to be in, and find ways to create boundaries and to really take care of yourself in a way, so that way you can have like a long withstanding, sustainable career as a property manager, not at the expense of your health and your relationships in your life. So that's why I'm so happy. Relationships are such an integral part of health. Yes. There was, I can't remember exactly what the study was, but they were, I think studying people's long-term happiness Mm -hmm. into your later years. Yeah. And the key indicator was your, the quality of your relationships. I believe it a hundred percent because think about when you know how you probably many of us hear stories or um, maybe even some documentaries or research around 
how, you know, when you keep that kind of poison, you know, in your body of whatever's coming from a, a bad relationship, resentment, um, maybe it's even hatred, whatever it is that's coming up, like when you're carrying that stuff around, it is poison to your body, literally. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, relationships are so important. Yeah. The benefits, I think, of coaching are numerous. Other than an improved relationship with a spouse or a partner, mm -hmm. what other benefits do you see clients create for themselves that maybe they weren't anticipating? Yeah, you know, I think it... <laughs> I think one of the most powerful places of awareness is really realizing how much control you have, mm -hmm. right? Because so many times we, we don't, we may have an idea or we may be completely clueless that we are truly believing that someone else is in charge of how we feel. And I think that point where you realize you know, one of the tools that Anna and I use in our coaching is called um, the model. And so being able to have someone put a situation right in the model and see what they're thinking, they're feeling, what are they doing? What are they not doing? And then the result that that creates, not to judge it, but to look at it, to gain awareness around what you're creating in your life is so powerful. So when that clicks, <laughs> right, I think that's yes. a very very powerful moment because not only may there be a moment where you feel a little like, ah, I guess maybe I could be doing a little better in certain areas, but even more so you feel empowered. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I do see a little, a little bit of self-judgment that comes with that awareness, but just as much or even more, you become empowered because it's like, I actually do have control to decide how I want to think about this, how I want to show up about this particular thing that my spouse and I seem to always argue about or whatever it is. So that's how I would answer that question. Yeah, 100%. I, yeah. I think, again, whether it's in a relationship, in a work environment, familial environment, it's very mm -hmm. easy to assume we don't have control. Yeah. It's very easy to assume that we feel a certain way because someone said a certain thing. And that is yes. so disempowering. Yes. And it's, it's kind of like playing Russian roulette every day mm -hmm. when you walk out the door. If, if you really mm -hmm. believe that yes. your circumstances cause your feelings, yeah. you have no say in how you show up no in the say. world. You're just reacting to everything. Yes. Yeah. It really is a very powerful moment. And what's interesting is that most of us have gone many decades without, you know, because we're not taught this most of us were not taught this stuff in school. Mm -mm. And so many of us are learning it later on in life, but Hey, better now than never, because it, it, it'll change the trajectory of your life and how you are showing up. It really will. Mm -hmm. How, where did you notice that for yourself? You know, so I, I started, um, the certification, so certification was last year at the time of this recording, which is also the year that I turned 40 and 40 has really been like a pivotal year. Right. And I've heard women say that before. And, and I just thought, oh, okay, you know, I'll be on the lookout, but just something just kind of happens where you become a little bit more clear and I think I can say this, especially because of my training, right? But you become a little bit more clear on what really is important to you. What deserves your time? Mm -hmm. What deserves your attention? Things that you just decide you are no longer going to worry about, that type of thing. And I think it just kind of, it was a bit of a disruptor. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean that in a good way, right? <laughs> But it really was because I was questioning a lot of things. And even my husband and I were even having some like tough conversations. And I, I thought about that. I was just like, I'm a bit of a disruptor right now, but I'm okay with it because these are some things that maybe have, um, I've been thinking about, or I've been unsure or maybe ashamed if, you know, within myself to admit, like, I'll give you an example is the, um, I need time alone. 
Mm-hmm. And my um, husband is, I don't know what that love language would be. Well, I guess maybe it's time together, but um, he really loves to, you know, be together. Right. And I enjoy that as well, but just as much, I need time by myself to literally not even speak. And I just want silence. And so I had to, you know, kind of coach myself a little bit and get coached right by, by coaches on a belief that I had around my life the way that it is right now, the way that I've created my life doesn't allow for me to have moments by myself. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at that in a very negative way. And, but I was thinking to myself, but Crystal, there are aspects of the life that you've created that were very intentional and you enjoy many parts about how your life looks like. So how can we bring the and in instead of it being like, either, either this or that. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the end was really me deciding how I wanted to accept the fact that I need time alone, how I wanted to communicate that need to my husband. And more importantly, how I decided to stop feeling guilty because I would try to ignore that part of me, especially being a mom, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how can I be a mom and I need time away? Like you need time away. (laughs) Trust me. (laughs) I, I believe that I, I went for a walk with a girlfriend of mine. She has two kids mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago and it was so windy and, and yeah. we walked like, I don't know, maybe a mile. We got back to her house and she's like, do you want to keep going? <laughs> I just thought to myself, like, Anna, just go. Yeah, <laughs> she, she needs she it. This. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Yeah. You walk in like a hurricane. If, if that was your only opportunity to get out and just have a little bit of peace for mm-hmm. a moment. Yeah. 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 So. I didn't, you know, I didn't know that I was somebody who needed alone time until probably two years ago. Okay. And, and I, I hear you on that because yeah. when you start showing up in ways that you haven't before, yes, it does disrupt the environment and people will comment on it. They'll question, they'll challenge you on it. And then it kind of becomes the question of, can I sit with this disruption long enough so that people see how it benefits all of us? Yes. If I get 20 minutes to myself. That's right. It's amazing how much work you, you need to put into getting 20 minutes for yourself when you're changing mm-hmm. patterns, but it is so worth it. Yeah. I love how you said that. It really is. It, it's worth it every time. And, and I think, you know, for our listeners right now, when you're thinking about the possibility of the discomfort that the disruption will bring because yeah, let, let's be honest here. It's going to be a little uncomfortable, but aren't we already right? Mm-hmm. So if we're uncomfortable so already. I, we might as well choose. Yes. We might as well choose. That's right. Well, that kind of leads me to another question that I know ha- I had when I first started hearing about relationship coaches, mm-hmm. how does this differ from therapy? Yeah, no, I really appreciate that question because that is something that definitely comes up a lot. And the way that I like to distinguish it is life coaching in general, relationship coaching, that is taking you from like a a baseline, you know, where you are right now to where you want to go, but your daily living activities are, you know, in all intents purposes are you know, you're functioning normally, that type of thing. But if you feel that, you know, there are some areas where you may be a little below that baseline where, um, you know, it's hard to get up in the morning or you're feeling depressed or you, you know, have been diagnosed with depression. And remember, I, what I'm loving most about, um, life coaching interest, interestingly, as it grows as an industry is that, I believe we are normalizing talking about mental health. Mm -hmm. And so if you're listening to this and you, you either know you do have uh, a mental health concern, um, or you're curious about it, you know, our therapists are wonderful places to start Mm -hmm. because they can help you with those diagnoses and making sure that you are taken care of properly. And so I really believe that therapy and life coaching, um, you know, work together beautifully, because then once you get to that baseline, you know, that's a wonderful place for a life coach 
to really just continue the amazing work that you will be doing, right? Possibly with the therapist to help get you to um, a baseline state. So that way you can create and, um, you know, kind of dream from a different state of mind. Yeah, I agree. I I am a big proponent for both therapy and coaching. And I've said it before. I said, I will always be working with one, the other, or both at the same time, if absolutely necessary. I agree. Um, I think, you know, obviously right now it's, it's, it's common knowledge that our mental health providers are overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I think it's, it's interesting because I think we all have inner trauma that could stand Mm -hmm. to be looked at, but you don't have to be doing it all the time. Right. So for me, like I'll work with a therapist for like three months at a time, get myself to Mm -hmm. a point where I'm feeling fine. And I already know in my head, like this might come back up. Right. That's okay. Yeah. I know exactly what to do when that happens. So I think a big part of it is like educating ourselves Yes. What is appropriate for a therapist? Mm-hmm. What is appropriate for a coach? Yes. You don't need to call a therapist mm-hmm. to work on time management. Right. You don't need to call a coach <laughs> to work on trauma. That's right. <laughs> I love yeah. educating um, our people about the difference between the two and how they can both assist them mm-hmm. in getting more out of life. You know, like, yeah might be very, you know, well aware that you're a mentally healthy person, but just be struggling with that one thing with your husband, that yes. for reason you just can't figure out how to mitigate it or communicate it, communicate it better. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I love that you said that because, you know, my husband and I actually even recently did that exact same thing. Right. So even though I'm a life coach, I don't want to be like a life coach in the marriage. You know what I mean? So, (laughs) and my husband probably isn't going to listen to me. Right. So (laughs) so that's why, you know, uh, we even brought in a therapist earlier in the year who specifically was trained on trauma, just like what you just shared there. And we used her to help us like discover some inner childhood traumas that we had that would show up in our current disagreement in our forties and fifties. And so it's Mm -hmm. just like, this stuff is so important. And yeah, I'm, I'm such on the same page with you that there is room for both and that I too will always have a therapist and a coach or, you know, both or one at the one at a time, whatever, but it's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what are some of the feelings that women are experiencing either in their relationship or in their life in general when they come to you? Yeah. You know, sadly enough, and many times helplessness Mm. is one of, one of the, the things that I, I see. Um, and usually that's coming from a place of we've tried this, we've tried that I've done this, I've done that. Right. And we're just looping. We're just kind of just doing the same thing a different day. And so helplessness is definitely one. Resentment is a big one as well. And, um, and sometimes, and I actually haven't thought about a different way that this can be described, but uh, one client shared with me neutral and, and on the onset of that, like, it probably doesn't sound very triggering, but what that, what stands out to me about that feeling is, you know, that you're possibly coping also, right? You're in a place where things can be better, but um, maybe you've decided um, that you've, you've done enough work or you're tired of doing the work, or you're the one that's always taking the lead, that type of thing. And so those are probably the top three that I would say. And I would say for, you know, your listeners, anyone who is feeling that, any of those feelings, I say like, get curious about that and, and reach out and get support there. And there's so much free information, like even on my Instagram or on like my um, bi-monthly newsletter, I'm so big on like just sharing tons of free information, right? So yeah, (laughs) yes, yes, absolutely. Right. (laughs) So tons of free information that can support you and help you maybe asking questions to help you understand yourself a little bit better and maybe what's going on. 
you know, practical tips, things that you can turn around and take into your relationship that same day. And then of course, there's always the invitation to do more and, you know, work with me, whether that's one-to-one or like in a mastermind setting, but yeah, use those as kind of alarm bells with you. Like, what do you focus on when someone comes to you and, and becomes a client? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. So during the sales call, uh, the client will answer questions. And it's really important for me to focus on the area that it can, it kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier, how, you know, I am never the expert in anyone else's life. You know, I'm just that guiding light to help shine on that area that they're struggling with and just helping them peel back the layers. So that way they can think, do, be how they really want to um, show up in the world. And so that questionnaire is really important on the sales call where we get to meet each other because I'm learning what you've tried, how you're feeling, what's most important to you, like what you would consider a win after working with me for one-to-one is a three-month program. And out of curiosity, do you see any trends in what people are looking for with that win? You know what? Usually it's a feeling. It's it's a feeling. Yes. Right. And it's like, it's to feel, um, you know, happier or that type of thing. And, and interestingly enough, we, we always know at the onset it's because they're looking to the spouse, right. Mm -hmm. But kind of the Trojan horse in all of this is that's okay to believe that. But once we start working together, you're going to learn how all of that is already available to you. Mm -hmm. And so that's the powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that question because I kind of smile when it is a feeling because I'm like, we can do that. We can do this. (laughs) We can do that. I think that's the thing that that I wish more people knew is that they're waiting for someone to say something or for something specific to happen before they'll Mm -hmm. allow themselves to have a certain feeling. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that way. That's right. That's so true. Yeah. But we, just like we were saying earlier, we are just not taught this stuff. <laughs> we really aren't, before, you know, in, in like our formal education, that type of thing. And so that's why I'm so thankful that you have this podcast out and, you know, more and more life coaches uh, are sharing this message because it's, it, it's going to help you live a life that you possibly didn't think was available to you. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that was one of my reasons for becoming a coach. When Mm -hmm. I invested in the tools, I I never had a plan to quit my job. I I Mm -hmm. was very convinced, like, I'm going to keep climbing this ladder. This is what I want. I want more properties, bigger properties. I want to challenge myself. And what ended up happening was that once I started working with these tools, my experience of my day to day changed. Mm-hmm. And it was easier. And I was doing a better job of managing my emotions, managing work yeah. alongside personal goals. And then I would show up to work and I would watch people bumping up against these challenges that I had processed and coached yes. on and overcome. And then I started getting frustrated at work because I would see people and think, gosh, like there's a better way to do that. There's a better yeah. way to think about that. And so that was when I was like, you know what? Like, I really need to share this with people Yes, because it feels like I'm holding on to something mm-hmm. so valuable, so precious, so helpful. Yeah. And I can't just spend all of my day on someone else's dime mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to teach mm-hmm. people, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I'm like, so glad you did. I'm you. so glad you did. You as yeah. well. You as yeah. well. It's needed. So tell me a little bit about your program. What do you go over? What are people going to learn? Yeah. So I'm really excited to um, talk about my first mastermind that I'm going to be offering in January of 2023. And so we'll make sure that we have the link in the show notes to this episode. So that way you can learn more. But Interestingly enough, one-to-one has been a big goal of mine, and I take clients through three stages, awareness, becoming, and then change, right? Where you become aware of what's going on, why you are doing the things that you're doing, what are the, those like, you know, mindset 
and in and beliefs that you've been holding on to that maybe aren't serving you anymore. And then the becoming stage is just that, right? Where you're starting to become the woman, the person who you really do want to be, and then focusing on that change towards the end. And so all even though that is very much still available, I was really praying about how. I wanted to show up in the new year. And I just felt like spirit led really to do it in a bigger way. And so the mastermind is not going to just focus on relationships. We're also going to be talking about your home life Mm -hmm. and also your professional life. And so those three foundational area areas, we're going to go over the first quarter of the year. And so we'll come together and we'll, we'll, you know, clients will share with me what their goal is in each of those areas. And we will knock it out in the first quarter of the year, because how many times do we make a plan and give ourselves a year to do it? You don't need a year to do it all the time. right? No. Yes. You need someone who can coach you and guide you and get you in the belief and mindset that can, you know, like remind you of who you are. We have such powerful beautiful brains. And if we allow ourselves to, you know, give ourselves a chance to show up in a different way. I mean, it's amazing what can come of that. And I know that I've seen that in some, in many levels of my life, and I expect to see it in even bigger levels as the years go on. And I continue to invest in myself and my brain, but you know, the benefits of working on yourself I mean, you'll, these are things that you can't unlearn. Mm -hmm. You'll never say, gosh, you know, I wish I didn't do that. So I'm really excited to offer the mastermind. And if that piques your interest, just like we said, check out the show notes for more information. Yes. Um, Like I said, I have coached with Crystal before and she's an amazing coach, remarkably patient, (laughs) (laughs) remarkably patient and just open. I, I think you know, a lot of times, whether, whether it's real estate, property management, we're all harboring a lot. We're all Mm -hmm. trying to put on this happy face. We're all trying to show up in a socially appropriate way. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how beneficial it is to have an outlet where you get to just let that all go. Yes. And what's amazing about it is when you find the right coach, when you, when you find people who are trained in how to do this Mm -hmm. and you put that all out on the table, you give yourself more power than to make change. People have these thoughts, have these limiting beliefs, and they just keep carrying them around rather than stopping Mm -hmm. to look at them and then ask the question, okay, what now? Yes. I love that you said that because how many times, and I know I've been guilty of this, I want want to see something different. And I had to look back and be like, but wait, I'm not doing anything different. You know, I'm just <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> right. Yeah, yes. and, and it's like, yeah, you have to do something different to create different results. You really do. And like you said, we're walking around smiling and in our Chico suits and that type of thing. <laughs> and it's like- The internal experience can be very different. Yes, it can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I love what you just said about doing something different. Um, mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. I've been doing a lot of public speaking at mm-hmm. different industry organizations yeah. and with associations. And I don't know if this industry in particular is really familiar with coaching. Okay. Very, very new. And so part of this podcast is trying to educate people on what this looks like, what a client relationship looks like. And so for our listeners, if any of this has piqued your interest, or if any of the stories that Crystal or myself have shared are resonating with you, I want you to take Crystal up on her offer to try something new. That's right. If you try it and you hate it, you never have to do it again. But I'm, I'm fairly certain that if you try it, you're going to get different results. You're going to love what you create for yourself. Yeah. I second it. I have nothing else to add. It's perfect. (laughs) Well, Crystal, thank you so much for joining me today. It was such a pleasure to have you on the podcast. 
um, hear your story, hear what you've overcome, hear what you're creating in the world. Um, for our listeners, the information for her mastermind will be in the show notes. Until next week, I love y'all. Keep going. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Addicted to Busy. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast. This helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode.